As the United States forces were abroad, terrorizing other countries during World War II, it was also terrorizing its own citizens within the United States. Mexican Americans faced violence from police and military forces as well as the general public. Mexican Americans were discriminated against due to European American sense of nativity even though the southwest region of the United States was land stolen from Mexico in 1848 through the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Any signs of Mexican heritage prize, such as Pachuco suit suits, were seen as rebellion and were punished. After the Sleepy Lagoon case in which 17 Mexican-American youths were tried for the death of Jose Gallardo Diaz, an organization that came to be known as the Citizens Committee for the Defense of Mexican-American Youth took it upon themselves to combat the injustice the 17 youths faced, such as them not being able to change their clothes to prove that zoot suits were obviously worn by hoodlums, and having to stand up whenever any accusation was made against any one of them. In 1942, in a letter to Vice President Henry A. Wallace, the Youth Committee for the Defense of Mexican-American Youth seeks for help to put an end to discrimination against Mexican-Americans, asking for a chance to prove that their community belongs in the United States and in order to bring greater unity during a time of war. Mexican-Americans were negatively stereotyped by police officers. Quote, they treat us like we are criminals just by being Mexican or of Mexican descent. This is not surprising because during the Sleepy Lagoon case, a document known as the Ayers Report had been presented to the grand jury that addressed all discrimination and said that Mexicans had a tendency to become criminals or delinquents. Although this document's release may have increased racial tensions and discrimination against Mexican Americans in the Southwest, it did not mean that its content was an accurate reflection of the population, although its purpose may have been to make people believe it was. The media enhanced these feelings towards the Mexican-American community by making fun of zoot suits and using the word Mexican in an insulting manner. Mexican-Americans wore zoot suits to distinguish themselves, calling themselves pachucos. Pachucos built a community based off of oppression and discrimination, but these communities were often seen as gangs by European Americans. Pachuquismo served as an additional level of criminalization, aside from being Mexican. The saying, quote, boys will be boys turned into, quote, boys if Mexican will be gangsters. Mexican Americans had to constantly prove their loyalty to the United States, and they did through many different efforts in the war. They were active members of the Mexican American community, helping the war efforts by working in defense plants and fighting in Australia under General Douglas MacArthur. Mexican Americans were fighting in the front line and also contributing from the home front, but regardless of their location, their efforts were there. However, there were limitations placed on the Mexican American community that prevented them from helping with war efforts to their heart's desire. Mexican Americans faced language barriers because everything was written in English. These barriers separated two communities that coexisted with each other, but because of the dominant nature of European American culture, there didn't appear to be the need to translate material to Spanish, even in the United States Southwest. The documentation status of individuals prevented them from attaining certain jobs, limiting the work they could contribute to help the United States. Quote, Discrimination is what hurts the most. The letters concluded by restating that discrimination is what divides the nation. The Youth Committee has done the best job in their ability to express the frustration Mexican Americans have with being discriminated against, as they want to help the United States and Allied forces win World War II. The Mexican American community in the United States, if given a chance, hopes to prove that they too are Americans, rightfully deserving the right to be treated the same as well as belonging in the United States.